and we're back on the roof. So we have an LG mini split here, single head. Uh, it's giving us a CH26, which is basically a uh, problem with the voltage going to the compressor. Could either be the compressor or the inverter. I didn't diagnose this. So I'm gonna be replacing the compressor and the inverter board. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the recovery first. Uh, get this thing all recovered, sweat out the old board, uh, sweat out the old compressor. And since I have the compressor out, I'll go ahead and change the board because then I'll have more room to work. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So uh, yeah, so uh, here we go. So we got our uh, recovery going. And again, I'm weighing the charge. It should be about 4.85 is the factory charge. So I should get at least that. So while this is happening, I'll be taking this apart, get that all opened up, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we got the compressor all unwrapped. So we got to brace it here and there. All right, we got all of it out. So we got 3.14. So almost four pounds. It's a little shy of the factory charge, but close enough where I'm not too worried. So you never get all of it out of there. You can still see there's about two PSI in there. So that's my de-minimus. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get all set up. We'll purge with nitrogen and then we'll uh, flow nitrogen, sweat off that compressor, and then uh, go from there. So I'm blowing into my liquid out the section. to raise and then now we're gonna go ahead and sweat that off but first I need to unplug this so all right cool so we are ready to sweat this off I got the bolts on bed um, so we're gonna sweat this off first and then we'll sweat that off second So we have our pipes removed from our compressor. So we are good and turn off our nitrogen so we don't run out. And now we need to remove this compressor and uh, go ahead and put in a new one. I know you guys in the comments are gonna be telling me, why don't you just change the whole unit? Well, this is why. See all those units? Yeah, it's not happening, man. I do commercial. We don't, we don't uh, replace units unless it's absolutely 100% necessary. We try to fix the heck out of the thing until it can't be fixed no more if it makes no financial sense. A uh, new system option was provided, but it was chosen to go with the compressor. So anyway, I know I'm still gonna see those comments. Why don't you just change out the whole outside unit? Again, we do commercial here. It's not like residential, so um, anyway. Here's our new compressor. Go ahead and bring it over and shove it in there. Looks like, oh, it doesn't come with feet, does it? Nope, no rubber feet. Oh, it does come with a new cover though. A new rubber thing, that's cool. So we'll keep that. Um, cool, so we're gonna steal the feet off of this one. What we're gonna do now is we can go ahead and shove our pipes back in there and we'll just kind of bend it past so it will the bend will push into it. Okay, because it looks like I'm gonna have to heat this up because the solder has made the pipe a little thicker, so it doesn't quite fit in there. Let's see, probably have to do the same with the discharge. Yep. Oh no, that one actually went in pretty good. Alright, cool. So now we just need to braise it.
Okay, now we're gonna do our suction line. So we need to heat this one up first before it'll go in, so. We are done, assuming she, I got all of it. Actually, that wasn't too too bad. Not bad for my first compressor change out on a mini split. Because uh, usually I, I recommend a re unit replacement <laughs> or an outdoor unit replacement. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Check my other one, it looks good too. Yeah, cool. So we'll go ahead and wipe down our brazes. All right, so we're putting on this, uh, what should we call it? Uh, this crankcase heater. So we just got to wrap it around the compressor a bunch of times. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but is what it is. All right, cool. We got that on there. We'll go ahead and plug this back in. Uh, that was a total pain. All right, cool. That's on there. So now we go ahead and throw our cap back on. Alright, so we're gonna look at this board to see what we have to do with it. Okay, cool. I don't have to worry about the heat sink. Which is nice. That means I don't have to put any paste on or anything like that. Okay, so it looks like everything just plugs directly into it. And it's gonna mount upside down. Okay, so I'm looking at my wires here and they're all pretty much straightforward. So I'm gonna just unplug everything and hope for the best. Oh yeah, and there's two black, there's two black screws here, which are the uh, heat sink screwed into the plastic base, I believe. Okay, should be able to, there it goes. All right, I'll tighten up our screws, put our casing back on, and double check, make sure I plugged everything back in, because that's usually the thing you do is you miss a screw. <laughs> so I'm gonna double check, make sure I plugged everything back in, then we'll start putting the, uh, start putting, wrapping the compressor up with that stuff, put this back panel on, put the top on, and go from there. Okay, I got the stupid wrap back on. It's such a pain in the butt to get this on, but it's on there. Uh, so now we need to put this back panel here and that'll kind of hold this, you know, back in place, uh, which is that panel there. And then we'll put the lid back on. And then uh, she's been holding pressure now. I started a timer, but uh, yeah, she's been holding pressure, so that's good. Um, so we'll go ahead and start the vacuum. I'll go to lunch, come back. Should be at like 200 microns or something. That's what I'm guessing. But uh, yeah, let's get this all back together. All right, so we started at 359.1 on our high side. Yep, cool. And then I think it was 358.5 on the low side. Not too worried about that because it basically... Um, it's been about 30 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and get the vacuum going. Ooh, it's windy up here. So anyway, back from lunch. Uh, we are at... 223 microns. I got a little scared there because when it first started, usually it shoots down below a thousand really quick. But it took it, it went down to about 2,000, then it shot up to 11,000, and then it kind of stuck there for a minute. So um, I ended up uh, breaking it with nitrogen. I swept it again. I pulled it, and it was still going slow. And I said, you know what? Maybe there was an air bubble or something. Um, but apparently it popped. I mean, even the pump was sounding terrible. So uh, yeah, I was a little scared there. So anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to charge her up. So she holds uh, 4.8 pounds, so let's do this. Alrighty then, so we got her all charged up. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put some new Schrader cores in. New Schrader core is installed. I'm gonna put this stuff away. I'm gonna give it power and then we'll go turn it on downstairs and then make sure she runs. All right, she's definitely cooling. 
anyway, uh, as you saw, she's back up and running. So why not just replace the whole unit? <clears throat> well, I was able to just change the compressor. As far as the cost goes, uh, would it have made more sense to replace the whole unit? Probably. Um, but it was way cheaper than uh, having to um, replace the entire unit. And uh, as you can see here, she is operating. So that's cool. Love it when things work out. Ooh, and it's windy up here. So yeah, you can hear her humming along. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out if you have to replace a compressor on one of these guys. Uh, so thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, pick up some tools in my tool store or visit my affiliate links below. Thanks for watching.